Sailing to Utopia. Dream spaces built and imagined. Pech Kucha presentation in Gisborne, New Zealand in May 2016 by me, Peter Harris, aka The Wizard of Utopia. The long and winding road. This joke was on the wall in the philosophy department the day I enrolled last century in 1990. It goes, this is the man whose love of boat building gave, away, gave way to a passion for bantams which led to an interest in astronomy. Now he is a philosopher. Welcome to my life. The voyage begins. My kind big brother, John, hired this canoe for the twins and me at Missions, Mission Bay. I was a shy boy who loved boats and the imagined havens they could sail to. Once Dad took me to Rangitoto in his little sailing dinghy. It was choppy coming back and we could have sunk, but I loved it. Here in the north. I hated school and the grown-up world, so when I discovered Narnia it became my real world. I tried the back of cupboards looking for a way in there. Now, however, my aim is to bring some of Narnia back into this world. As Padarum said, I'm going to live as like a Narnian as I can, even if there isn't any Narnia. Middle Earth and Numenor. When we lived in Papua, I caught butterflies, built huts, grew peanuts and taro, and discovered Middle Earth, Numenor, Elvenholm, and the True West. Now I want to bring some of that back into present day Middle Earth, New Zealand. What do they teach them in these schools? The free life in Papua ended and I was dragged into high school so I could join the old boy network and get a job. I took up painting to resolve some of the angst. The one on the left is my ideal new university, the other my Dickensian actual school. Once my maths teacher told me, steer clear of the idiot fringe Harris, stick to the middle of the road. That advice I did not take. I read C.S. Lewis's defense of Christianity and Platonism, the theory that ideals and truths really exist in a higher realm. I ended up a lonely Christian fisherman on the Whangaroa Harbour for a while, rebuilding a boat I called the Galilee II. I tried to like the biblical heaven where there was no more sea or romance or marriage, but I really still preferred Tolkien and Middle Earth. Sin, salvation and science. The turmoil continued as it does when heart and mind don't agree. The drawing on the left is the ascent of man, with Benjamin Franklin as a, as a heroic human, daring to test the true nature of God's lightning. On the right is E.T. discovering a flower. I soon became an agnostic. Plato's Cave, Cantor's Paradise and this is the logician Kurt Gödel, who proved that all formal systems can generate statements which are true but unprovable in that system, which implies that this world is not a closed system. As G Diggory in the Narnian Heaven said, it's all in Plato, all in Plato. Bless me, what do they teach them at these schools? Of course, they lived at seven. After reading Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, we miraculously managed to turn around and sell our photo frame business and bought this ramshackle bungalow on Mount Eden. I built my first dome in the fairy garden while writing my philosophy thesis in the sphere, building a telescope and watching Hook and the young Einstein multiple times. Process Tree and the Apples of Eden my thesis expounded a form of process theory with diagrams. The tree form at left is an attempt at a game version complete with marbles. On the right is an embossed carved edge book, volume one of the utopian fantasy epic Apples of Eden. I'm up to volume five now, but that's another long story. Hand in hand, and together we'll stand on the threshold of a dream. That moody blues song launched the Ferro Cement Cafe Utopia in Kaiwaka. With much blood, sweat and tears and Fijoa wine, we did build and stand on the threshold of a dream. And I think many caught a glimpse of fairy in Middle Earth through it. Cafe Utopia 
in the flesh, dream space, Kaiwaka. My long-suffering wife, Raywin, ran the organic cafe amid ferrous cement, rebar and sand for a few years as I finished, tried to finish the building, write the epic and print and bind books. But the voyage ground to a halt. Bank loans ran out, parents passed away and our first grandchildren were born in Gisborne. Chagall Museum, a temple of art. After hiring that canoe so long ago, last year Big Brother John took us with him to Europe. Here I am in Chagall's Temple of Art, having an epiphany. I wanted to rush back to Kaiwaka and do a mural, but our second grandson, Eddie Ferenzi, had been born while we were in Florence, and I was to go straight to Gisborne to meet him when we got back and set up house here. Quiem for a dream space. So after meeting Eddie, and he was wonderful of course, stuck in Gisborne I did a painting of me painting the mural on the dove wall of the Ark in Kaiwaka. It shows the end of a dream in Kaiwaka and the beginning of a new one as I paint the possible humans and the tree of life and Raywin and grandsons studying the magical process of the tree. How many seas must a white dove sail? This is the actual dove prow, yet another ship that sails nowhere but hopefully symbolises the voyage of the spirit everywhere. I left it beached there on State Highway 1 as a kind of statement. We call it Apple Tree Haven, and it is magical with big apple tree and shady backyard and willows and a grassy field next door. But I know I can't just live and work there indefinitely, painting and carving and writing. It's too easy to retreat and become agoraphobic. I want to hold open a dreaming space for others as well, one more time. The world needs it. Hobbit Havens. Part of the vision is to build these Hobbit Havens for lifestyle blocks or backyards. They combine romantic art and craft with the strength of ferro cement. So even if I never sell my art, God forbid, the Hobbit Havens will keep the wolf from the door and keep our dream space open for business as more people use Airbnb and look for somewhere magical to stay. I'm late for a very important date. I believe the Divine Feminine or the Goddess is the neglected side of our Western dreaming and must be rediscovered if we are to find any peace and healing. I think I've learned how to create and hold such a space that has that balance for others to be and to do good things in. I think it's time for me to do that again using all I've learned from past attempts and failures. A new response, why not? This is a picture of the inside of a space I'm looking at. Opening up into a, a threshold into an act ideal is what Merlin did for Camelot and what Gandalf did for Middle Earth. We need more wizards like them to open and hold safe, sacred spaces for good things to happen, and I hope to be one of them. Renaissance needs to happen if the West is to survive. It starts with a declaration, planting a flag or a staff and saying, here is a good place. Here can be the centre. A new space? This could be my place and give them to do that. A sacred space for art, hobbit havens, love, beauty, truth and freedom. If you are inspired by this vision and want a studio or exhibition space with me, just do it. If you happen to be anywhere near Gisborne. At 61, I'm past overthinking my doubts. I hope you are too. As Robin Williams said in the Dead Poets Society film, Seize the day.